from Indiana. I've been out here for 15 years, but I missed the Midwest. I only really dated like masculine dudes, you know? And then when I got out here, I was spooned by my first data scientist. Getting spooned by a data scientist feels like getting held by like a shaky koala. Just, just so nervous to be holding a woman's body and also thinking about identity theft. And I ended up meeting my husband who is Cuban. I met him in Cuba. Um, and I brought him here on a 90 day fiance visa. It was an insane process, but I would rather bring a Afro-Cuban, Spanish-speaking communist through Trump's immigration system <laughs> than try to make a husband from a San Francisco Tinder date. <laughs> Yeah, usually it's an interesting merge between working, being with her, and then transitioning to get ready for shows. Everybody likes the crying dinner guest. Tu quieres agua? Y jugo? In 2011, I, I got laid off from the district from budget cuts that were kind of like a ripple effect from the housing crisis. Um, so I was an art teacher, which was like the thing that I went to school for. And then I felt sad. And then at the unemployment office, they were like, this is a great opportunity to do something you've, ne you've always wanted to do or learn something new. And I was like, what do I want to do with this time? Um, and people have always like, you're funny. You should try to do stand up or improv or something. The real reason I got into it is because when I was a teacher in front of my class, I felt fine like performing as a teacher and like facilitating or whatever. But when we were in staff meetings, I was mortified. I would get hives, super sweaty. I like couldn't get my point across. My voice was shaking. And I just thought, I, if I'm going to do anything in this life or this career, I got to get over this. All right, Mama's going to go, OK? Hey, mama. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> Mwah. Que dulce. Bye. OK, bye. She don't care. <laughs> it's fun to see people back out without masks Yeah. living their lives. We met in Pretty second cool. grade. That's we what, met in the second grade. That's, that's, what, what, I can, that's what I can accept. Our second grade teacher was our cheerleading, cheerleading coach. coach. Ashley came to a lot of the first shows. Mm -hmm. And then Emily just blew up. <laughs> and Blow up is an overstatement. Sorry. <laughs> I pro progressed in the, in the local scene over time <laughs> and started doing shows like six days a week or seven days a week. Mm-hmm. I slapped a guy outside of that club because he was just being unfortunate. It's oh. really disrespectful to the company that we were all keeping. All right, this is an ethical question. Do I take the exit lane and then cut in front of someone or do I wait my turn here? just like sex all the time, you know? Because when you're single, you never know when you're gonna get human touch for, again, you know? Sometimes you might hit it like three times in one day and be like, damn, I'm a magician, you know? And you're just swapping sheets out, like, like triple murder, you know? Like, woo, what a day. And then six months later, you're like, I just need a hug, you know? And I was like, would you like that? And my husband was like, that's horrible. That sounds horrible. I'm like, exactly, dude. And he was like, it's Exactly, that's what it sounds like. I wish I had a glass, you know, at the side of my bed. Every time I do it, I smash the glass. No, I don't want this, you know. Definitely need to Venmo that guy 20 bucks for a well-timed glass smash. <laughs> just, it's just like an unexpected interruption. So kind of learn how to incorporate that into the joke so it doesn't seem like you're thrown <laughs> off. Yeah. I think that's something that I learned, like, during COVID because when we're performing outside, you know, right in the middle of your set, like 
the trash the trash truck will come by or you know somebody will ride by on their bicycle playing like really loud music I usually have one notebook for work and one notebook for comedy but my purse is huge I put a sticker with boobs on it so I would know that this is definitely not for work oof I don't even want to read this sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and think where is that workbook did I leave it on my desk or what if it gets moved or the janitor like moves it somewhere and someone finds it and then they start going through it and they start reading it and then I you know end up losing my job and my house and um, you know everything <laughs> everything that I've ever worked for because I wrote down hoochies in my workbook it does suck. It does suck. I don't know if you've ever been ice You got it. Oh, that's really tight. We, we chose to have a full-size bed because we have a lot of conflict in our marriage and the full-size bed brings us to back together at the end of the night. The full-size bed is just like, hey guys, I know we had a lot of problems today, but like, what if we just put that all past us, you know? It's, uh, it's been hard to stay married I, <laughs> because we're, we've been trapped inside for like a year and a half with the other person. There's been like all sorts of, you know, conflict. Me and my husband have done a really good job, but there have been some tense moments. Um, last year around June, I read this article of this woman who stabbed her husband in the groin because he had eaten all the salsa. <laughs> and I was reading it, I was like, this is extreme, but I could see how it happens, you know? <laughs> Because this is not the first time he's eaten the salsa, but it is the last time. <laughs> the whole point for me of doing comedy is just to get like a lot of stuff off my chest. It's like not it's not like therapy, I don't think, but it's like a really good like workout where it's like, whew, I had a lot of pent up energy that I need to put into something. Baby is kicking. Well, I did shows up until like three weeks before I was due. And so people would just like watch my stomach and if they watched long enough they would they would see some sort of freaky aliens situation. I feel like sometimes they weren't even listening. It's distracting for me, you know, because it's like this whole person in there just like oh, and you're like what am I even saying when we when we have fights we we fight in our own language because you know you're so mad you just like you know I just say it in English you know and my husband he just he says it in Spanish we have no idea what the other person's saying which is awesome because we can get a good rough draft out of hateful things before we have to come together and truly, you know, compromise towards a solution. And, and my husband's like, what are you saying? You know, I'm just like mumbling to myself. I just take a deep breath and I'm like, <sighs> what I'm saying is, if we focus on our similarities and everything we've done until this point, I think we can work through it. And that is how you lie towards conflict resolution. <laughs>